that as I've been driving home, on my way back home, I've been getting this really powerful download that was actually triggered from a brief event. So two days ago, when I was at Crescent Beach, I was dri just driving to make a turn, uh, to make a left turn, and I jar uh, jetted out too quickly and almost cut a person off. But I got them to move ahead of me and the whole situation was resolved. But just a few minutes ago, while I was driving home, I was just driving down the road and then I saw another person do the exact same thing, almost the exact same thing as I did two days ago to that one driver. And it just got me in this download state where I was looking much more deeply into uh, that equivalent exchange, that rebound in that way. And just recalling the nature of forgiveness, to forgive everything, not to take it seriously and feel like I'm going to go into chaos and get all emotional about it, because that's what's keeping you in that loop. And that loop will continue to repeat and repeat and intensify itself each time it comes back around. And so it just got me into, again, this greater realization about the nature of the living laws. As I have talked about the living laws through the YouTube channel, I'm talking about how they govern everything, that they support everything. And again, just looking into this simple reflection about how God created the living laws and that it doesn't even matter if every single sentient being had a simultaneous thought all at once it still would not be enough to bring down the entire construct of the mind. The mind construct is a construct of God's, it's intelligent design. And the nature of the mind is to function as a consequence instrument. It is a consequence instrument that will help a sentient being into reaching a state of peace, of harmony, of love, of compassion. It's about bringing that sentient being back into harmony. And that if, whenever they go out of harmony, they attract chaos. Because the emotions and the thoughts that we have are impermanent. And they are not that of God. They are just all part of impermanent constructs. Where God has no thought, but God uses thought. Where God has no emotion, but God uses emotion through us. Through feelings, through emotion, through mind, through thoughts, all of this can be utilized by God. But God is not a thought. God is not a feeling. God is not an emotion. God is not the mind. And so the important thing to understand is the true importance of the natural living laws. That you must be aware of these living laws and their function. For they have been created with such deep sophistication, no sentient being will ever be able to crack that creation. It cannot be hacked. It cannot be manipulated. It cannot be overthrown. And of course, there are those beings that exist, other sentient beings that exist, that are in the greatest extremes of suffering because they actually detest God. They despise everything that God represents because they want to feel like they're better creators than God. These are the soul rebels that they can create better than God by controlling everything, by manipulating everything, by consuming everything, by conquer conquering everything. They think that they can create better than the Creator. And this is why they're in the turmoil that they are. They go truly by that old philosophy where they think 
it is better to rule in hell than to serve in heaven. But all they're doing is suffering in hell. <laughs> you cannot rule that which is distorted because you have nothing. It's nothing but material. And that's what they value. They value the material universe. And it is all through their backwards, inverted systems that we're experiencing here on the earth where they have been permitted to surmount their rule for a certain amount of time because this is the grand transformation humanity needs to get out of eons of darkness. This is why the Dark Age has been able to rule for the amount of time that it has been able to rule for the amount of time it has because of the extremities that humanity itself, the sentient beings, have placed upon themselves. We have placed upon ourselves millions of years of war, of suffering of every kind, poverty, disease, battling, survival and mentality, classes and ranks, rulerships, common people, the higher class, the middle class, the lower class, the impoverished class, all of this, all of it combined is the combination of the suffering agenda that mankind has had to go through for those who have incarnated on this planet, going back many, many hundreds of thousands of years. The sounds of the convoys strong and alive. And just like with the convoys right now, we're seeing the turning of the tide. The tide is now turning. But nonetheless, everything that we've been going through here on the earth, all this karmic rebound that has represented a culmination of millions of years of suffering, galactically speaking, and possibly even universally speaking as well too. All of this, everything that represents the Dark Age, to which these soul rebels have been given the platform to say, go ahead and erect your rule. Go ahead and create these empires. Go ahead and create these civilizations where you think you'll control everything. Because you'll see again and again how every single one of them will fail because they are in violation to the natural living laws. They are a violation and they are out of touch with the natural balance of the harmony that the living laws represent. For they exist to uphold the balance, the harmony, the peace, and the perfection of God. And that's what the entire universe is. That's what all of mind is. Mind is that instrument. It is that instrument that is telling us that as long as we keep throwing thoughts and we keep throwing these emotional traumas towards ourselves and others, you are only continuing to create these ripples, sometimes small ripples, sometimes big ripples, but nonetheless these ripples come back and they will penetrate you again and again and again until you learn, and again it may take thousands of years, for a sentient being to finally understand that they have to learn that if they want to bring themselves into harmony, they have to be harmony. You cannot have harmony through chaos. That is, again, what a lot of the soul rebels do not get. It's what the extremists of creation, I could call them, do not get. They don't understand that. They don't realize that the only living being is God. They don't seem to realize that they have no power through their own ego. They think the ego is power. They think the ego is their prime source for the providence of their conquering. And they are completely deluding themselves. So if we want to move ourselves into the harmony of that peace and that splendor and that perfection, which God is attempting to teach us how to do, then we have to move back. We have to catch ourselves and see what we're doing. We're constantly being barraged 
by these out of touch, chaotic thought forms and heavy emotional states. heavy mental traumas and it's consuming us it's been consuming us lifetime after lifetime wherever we have gone whether it's on this planet or another whether it's in this dimension or another it continues to plague humanity because we don't get it we don't realize it we're not taught this in fact, we are taught this, but it is buried, it is slandered, it is manipulated, and it's buried in the dirt. And there will be those certain people who will come along, every age, from the few to the many, that will be these reminders for humanity, either in smaller capacity or larger capacity, based upon their outreach. They will remind humanity to remember the nature of the universal living laws. It is the law that God wants to write on your heart, as Jesus once said. It is not to completely revere the laws written on dead stone, but to revere the law that is always written on your heart by God, for it is alive. And it is evolving and it is growing and it is changing. It changes and evolves with us as we change and evolve. So this is what I was been this is what I was reflecting on through this download, telling me a great deal, <laughs> just as I speak it now, about the importance of the living laws, about why they're here, about what they do, and what is their function. Their function is all about bringing us to God. For us to know that we are God. It's like that time when I said, Father, why is it? Why is it that you created life? Why, why is it here? So that you can be as I am. Of course, now I refer to the mother. Right? So the mother would say the same thing. For you, so that you can be as I am. And that's again the whole nature of the mind. The mind is this construct, it is this intelligent design, it is this instrument tool that balance that is attempting to keep the balance of harmony together. It's like a still pond. And as soon as we let out a thought, that thought is like a little pebble being cast into the still pond. And whatever that thought is, that ripples back to us. But again, as soon as we go into that rippling, that's the impermanence. That impermanence now creates situation, circumstances, that confines us based upon the attention of that thought. We cast that thought into the pond, we create those ripples, and it's like those ripples also return back to us. So it could be positive or negative, but it doesn't matter. It's still putting yourself in a confinement. The only way you will ever know, the only way you will ever realize who you truly are, is with a still pond. The water must be still, and everything is silent. That noise will still cause a reverberation effect upon the pond, casting a pebble, or even a stone into that pond will cause that immense rippling. And that rippling will always come back to you. Some people may think that, oh, if I just cast this thought, oh, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. Well, no. You're always going to get a receipt. You're always going to get that boomerang coming back to you. Always. The mind, the universe, spirit, will always give you that receipt. Whether it's positive or whether it's negative, it does not matter. Because the universe, because spirit, does not see things as positive or negative. A thought is a thought. A feeling is a feeling. An emotion is an emotion. It does not matter if it's orientation, because looking at the orientation, 
is a human concept. That's based upon human rules and human ideals. That is not the way of God. The way of God is that a thought is a thought, a feeling is a feeling, an emotion is emotion, it's energy. And we're casting that frequency, that vibration of that thought, of that feeling, of that emotion throughout the still pond, rippling it, and it will ripple back. And it does not matter how small or how large that pebble or stone is. Even the slightest little touch, dipping your little finger, your pinky finger, in the water just for a brief instant, will still create a disturbance. That disturbance will always return to you. Always. Every single time. And so again, this is why we go into beingness. This is why we go into the non-dual. This is why we go in to the heart. And we work to quiet the mind. We want that still pond. We want that pond silent and still. So that there is not a single flutter. That there is not a single ripple. There's no disturbance whatsoever. And when we can maintain that and stay in beingness, you will know the entire universe. You will know God. There is no greater reward than being in the non-dual. Yes, you have to practice. Yes, you have to clear away your debris. You have to clear out your conflicts. You have to remove all of the noise. And you need to throw back all of those casting of the stones. It also goes back to what Jesus said. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Well, we've all been filled with that sin and we've kept casting those stones. So we have to learn to let go of that. To leave the stones on the ground and not keep picking them up and throwing them into the still pond to therefore face the reverberation and the ripple effect back to us. The rebound. When a sentient being is able to understand this, when they realize this, they say, well, that's all it's about. I just have to go in and clean myself up. Exactly. And we may have thoughts here and there, yes, but let's make those thoughts as close to neutrality as possible. If they're not neutral, let's bring them back. This is why we work with positive energy to counteract the negative. And then we just have balance. Because we as human beings assign those polarities to those thoughts. If I think ill of a person, well, then there's going to be somebody that's going to come in and they're going to think ill of me. But if I think ill of a person, and then I catch that, and I work to help a person, and I gain a lot of this momentum forward, even when that reverberation ripple effect comes back to me, I'm able to forgive it. Because it will lighten it, it will cushion it. Because I'm putting that serving of innocence ahead for me. And that creates a cushioning effect. When you notice that you do something harsh, when you notice that you're putting something negatively oriented in that way towards a person or a thing or what have you, and that ripple goes out, what you want to do is catch yourself. And of course it's important to forgive the situation within yourself. But you're also serving innocence. So rather than bashing a person, you compliment the person. You open a door for somebody. And what that what will happen is that that consequence where you gave a negative or negatively oriented action will still come back to you. But what will happen is it it'll get cushioned. You'll get cushioned by it because of the good deeds that you are putting in serving innocence. So it creates a cushion, which means you'll experience that, but it will not be of the intensity that it could have been 
should you have still fueled that negative intent. You are now instead serving innocence and now you create a cushion. And that's what happens. We see ourselves as the center of the pond. We see this gentle wave acting as a cushion. It's helping to shield some of the ripple that comes back to us. So that reverberation of that intent will always come back to you, but you have the capability to cushion it. You cushion it with the serving of innocence. When you serve innocence, when you bring that harmony into yourself, you're bringing that positive energy to cushion these acts that have been performed by you. You're now going to have that saving grace. This is where we can say that miracles come together. Where things look bad, but all of a sudden, things now start to look amazing. Because we've learned to forgive. We've learned to trust. We've learned to love. we learned to have our faith. And that cushion now helps to prevent a great deal of that repercussion, of that consequence, from hitting you you'll see the event, but it will not be as intense as when the original intention of negative orientation came out of you. It'll lighten. That's the beautiful thing about being able to work with positive reinforcement. And so we continue to do that. So this is an important thing, is you want to write down certain things that you know have been harmful in the past, that have been left unresolved. And now that it is there, I would say do the opposite. You yelled at a person and screamed at them because they cut you off in traffic. How about instead, you let a person pass you. You let a person through. You wave at a person and it stops for you. You do something of kindness that creates that cushioning so that when that rebound comes back, you'll have so much cushioning in the way through positive reinforcement it will not affect you so harshly. You'll see it, and you'll realize, oh wait, that kind of reminds me of something that I did a while back. But it actually turned out pretty well. It's because you were doing positive reinforcement. It's because you were atoning yourself. So let's keep that in mind. Let's remember the nature of the living laws. They cannot be explained by words. They cannot be articulated. <laughs> I'm seeing these trucks, these convoys, we love Canada. It's great. But they cannot be articulated, but they can be known. Because these are God's laws. God's laws do not become translated through words. It does not come through contemporary language. It comes through the heart. It comes through feelings. It is that feeling of balance, harmony, peace, prosperity, and perfection. That is the heart of every law, is to keep the balance, is to keep the peace, is to bring perfection into yourself with everything, through the physical body, through time, through space, through cause and effect, through the planet, through the galaxy, through the universe, through absolutely everything. So the more that we can uphold that, and like I said, we just clean out our clutter. We do the BCR technique. We do cord removal healing. We do our inner work. We go into meditation. We do some heart rate variability breathing. We atone for actions that have been left unresolved, that we have committed, that to ourselves is negatively oriented. We're patching all of that up. And now that rebound comes, there's so much cushioning because you've done so much great work in cushioning that. You brought positive reinforcement into the whole situation. And now that whole situation is finished. You've left the cycle. It no longer has to repeat because you've learned a lesson. And you know that as soon as that thing comes back around, 
and you don't react to it, everything just becomes in harmony with it. You're free. You're free from that cycle. You're free from that signpost. So I'm recording this audio right now because I am going to share it with everybody. We're just getting an audio representation of Brad's journey around the city. <laughs> just getting these downloads as I drive, and I don't usually do this, but it was such a profound download that I was getting, and I felt this is good to share with other people, because this really tells the truth about the nature of our mind, of what it does, it's a consequence instrument. As soon as we get a thought, as soon as it ripples, boom, we're in the mind. As soon as we silence the mind again, we're out of the mind, and we're in harmony with the living laws. And we think another thought, well, we're back in the mind again. <laughs> and then we correct that thought, we correct the situation, and now we're back into the stillness, and okay, we're out of the mind again. So it's kind of like just saying, I'm in the mind, now I'm out of the mind. Now I'm in the mind, now I'm out of the mind. It's like you're playing hopscotch. <laughs> so we gotta work on not playing too much hopscotch. We wanna learn to keep our minds quiet. You want to learn to keep quiet. You want to learn to stay in that silence and that stillness and not play hopscotch between the mind and non-mind. When you are non-mind, you are in abidance to the living laws of God. And like I said, when your mind is still, you will know everything about the universe. You will know God will know yourself. And that is the greatest reward you could ever possibly ask for. So thanks for tuning in with me, and I'll speak to you again in another perspective of the now. Take care. Thank you very much for checking out the New Earth Teachings YouTube channel. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And you can check out the websites, newearthteachings.com, where you can order a private session, three questions by email, EQ method, and a lot more. And you can also check out HealingCodeCards.com, where you can grab your mind deck, your body deck, and of course the brand new body deck special edition. All of these are available in digital editions as well. And you can also get a shirt just like this through HealingCodeShop.com, where you can experience the healing codes in apparel form. So feel free to check out these websites Thank you so much, and I'll speak to you again in the next video. Be well.